you want to sit or stand? We'll just stand, that's okay, Mayor. I hope not to be here very long. I would just start off and say that uh, we're in, the FY15 represents our fourth full fiscal year, excuse me, third full fiscal year of implementation of rebuilders, fourth and 15. So we are relatively new. Uh, in implementing a pay-as-you-go, no-debt, over-comprehensive program that addresses both the operations and maintenance of the city's drainage and street and traffic system, as well as the improvement of the city's street and traffic system. And the combination of the Fund 2310 operating budget and the M and N programs as presented at the CIP represent collectively the department's best recommendation for, in fact, addressing the maintenance needs of the system as well as as rapidly as we can improving that system in conformance with the constraints in the use of the funding sources and the charter amendment. So we appreciate that there would be an intent, as we would understand in the proposed amendment, to try to free more money specifically for projects. But I would comment that the combination of what we have already presented and is contained within the CIP, which the council has for consideration in 42A, is the department's recommendation for, in fact, accomplishing projects as quickly as possible. And it's inclusive of 108 separate projects with a forecast appropriation schedule over the five years of $1.16 billion in dedicated and drainage street renewal fund. I'm going to let Susan talk to the specific complicating factors, the challenges that further fiscal constraints would represent to the department. Um, can you hear me? And I know that you've seen large cash balances, and I know that's the, that's the concern. To spend the cash balances takes <coughs> appropriation, and the appropriation has been coming faster and faster. Hopefully you've seen that. Um, but all of our cash modeling shows that if you do what you propose in this particular um, amendment, that we will very probably or possibly go negative in terms of the overall balance in not 15, obviously, but in 16, and almost assuredly would in 17 if we do this. Because the cash modeling that we've done, granted, was very conservative. We started with what we knew we could do and not knowing. No one's ever tried to figure out the cash flow out of, it, out of all of the CIP. There are currently 155 projects on our books that are still being worked out of Fund 4042. It's a huge number of projects to try to figure out the cash flow. It rains, it changes, it, it, a project gets delayed because there's cabling under the ground that have to be moved before they can do it. It changes, so it's difficult to, to model. But we believe, I believe, that it will go negative by FY17 if you do this. And I do want to add one, one thing. We, we did conservative budgeting. I know that. I, I'm the one who set it up. I, I, I worked with the finance department initially, but this is my model. I, I own it. Um, I, I take ownership. And so doing it conservatively as we began was important because we didn't know what was going to happen, how the cash would flow, whether we would collect, whether we would be as successful as we have been in collecting over 90% of the, of the drainage team. And so while it was conservative, we have made adjustments as we went along. I don't know how many of you are aware that 53 million, I think, of what you have approved in projects is in something called 4042A. I know some of you, I've talked to a few of you about this, you know it's there. So as we determined that we weren't going to spend the cash as fast, as we learned and, and go through this process, 
We've literally moved cash into this 4042A and you've appropriated, through your council actions, $53 million to date, which is over and above what the normal CIP that you have been seeing has, has brought forward. So we've adjusted as we've gone along to try to bring more projects forward. So I think we're a little negative, and then we could be in the situation where we would have to issue commercial paper. Commercial paper is not a problem in itself in issuing commercial paper, but if we have it outstanding for longer than a year, we have violated the, the charter. So if once we go negative, if we continue on the same path we are on, if we go negative, I believe we'll stay negative for a period of time based on all of our modeling, and that we would then be in a position where we would have to delay future projects to try to get this thing back on track. Gilbert, still, I believe your time has expired. Can I put you back in the queue? Please. Councilmember Davis. Thank you, ma'am. Um, why are you just coming today to talk to us about this? I was asked to come today on here. I know, but why didn't you call my office before you said you made phone calls? I'm the author of this amendment. So why didn't you try to enlighten me two weeks ago? I think this is very inappropriate. And this is one of the things that we're fighting, that we're fighting right now. And that's why we have the amendments today. So where, where are the projections, where are the models? I have models that we've been working so with. So why didn't you come in and try to talk to us about and show us the models? The projections, council member, are represented in both the operating budget, which council has previously acted on, and in the uh, CIP, which you have uh, proposed in the uh, item that you're considering today and considered earlier two weeks ago. Because, I mean, quite frankly, I understand some of the things you're saying, but, you know, I just, you know, I would like to be able to connect the dots and see. I would like to be able to add, take a tube and add another two underneath and draw a line and come up with four. But right now, I just can't. We're talking about possibilities and conservative projections, and I, I just don't get it. I'm sorry. You know, I'm not, I guess, that's why I'm not an engineer, I guess. Well, I'm not an engineer either, but CPA. And, and maybe that's why I'm a, a teacher, because I, I deal with facts and then your kids, and, and I understand that. But my point is that I, I just can't. I can't see this. I can't see, you know, because when I check my bank account at home and I make sure and I have all my items that I spent, I add it up and I look, say, okay, I have enough money and then it's great to go to the next day. Then I know how much I can spend for the next day. I, I just I just can't get it. I understand why I have a negative ten million dollar contingency fund. I, I just don't get it. And so <coughs> You know, and I, I believe that this may be a scare tactic again. I, I don't know I, because we, we're not properly prepared. And so, I, I, you know, I'm. I think we. Can, I think we need to go forward with this. Um, I'm going to ask my council members to support this. Uh, the amendment that I put forward, and I think we make the adjustments in the future, so we won't go in the negative. And that's called balancing your checkbook. Councilmember Dennis, if I may ask, you, you did receive your one-on-one -on -one CIP presentation from the department. Yes, ma'am, we did. But what I'm saying right now is... And, and in answer to you, I, I understand you're talking about this specific budget amendment. Yes, ma'am. And, and so if I heard you correctly that uh, you are, if in fact it goes negative in two years, you're willing to kill projects at that time. I, I'm, I'm, I don't think it's going to go negative, ma'am. I could be wrong. But again, that's what I'm talking about. Why are we here today doing this? It, it, it should have come to this. It should just like uh, when you know we had a conference call with the Woodville Houston Committee and to talk about some of the other items. <laughs> that was last week. And just like every other organization that wants something, they want us to, to understand their point of view. They come out with <laughs> items, you know, pretty pictures and numbers and all this, and so we can get an understanding. I, I don't have it. I feel like a, a constituent at a CIP meeting, I'm just trying to get an understanding of what Public Works is going to do, because it just went all over my head. Councilmember Boykins. You know, Mayor, it, it, Susan, first of all, good to see you, and, and, and I appreciate your comments as well as Director Cooper, but, you know, I'm kind of disappointed 
as Councilmember Davis just articulated, being a, a person who I consider myself a champion for rebuild, that this was not brought to my attention. If you would have brought this with the supporting documents to say that you know, and it's not an estimate, Susan, that that is, a, is factual information that we would put rebuild in that position, I probably would have a different approach to it. But to bring this to the council today, and I'm not trying to say you bring in a scare tactic. I'm not a CPA. But something this important, for not to bring it to my attention, a week ago, at least said council, if it wasn't for Chris Lindsay with engineers, bringing it to me, my attention to say, council, we're here some concerns from an engineering perspective. And I responded to her concerns. Um, I wouldn't have you know, known this was a concern, but from your numbers, I mean, from your perspective, presenting numbers to say it can put the program in a, in a, in a, in a you know, a down spiral, you know, that, that's, that's an issue. But the other concern I have, of course, <coughs> Susan, from your perspective, if we're talking a few years down the road, the city of Houston, the last audit I, wrote, I read, I think the city of Houston is, is gaining uh, uh, increased population to the tune of about 12 to 1,300 people per day. That's what I work, uh, uh, read. And the real estate market is growing. Impervious cover, which is a key component to fund and rebuild Houston, is expanding and growing every day. I just don't see how we don't go down like that. As this population continue to grow, impervious cover continue to expand in terms of revenue for the city, we will continue to earn revenue. I understand what you're saying, and, and you're looking at it from a financial perspective. But to predict that we will go in the down sp uh, spiral in the next few years, I'm just kind of confused about that. But before I wrap it up, again, Susan, with re pertaining to rebuild Houston, if it's anything that we see a red flag, I would hope that you guys would bring it to my attention and not at council. I would, I would say again that with the implementation of 